Hi, I'm Bob Warfield, and today I want to show an example of how to use GWizard Estimator to quote a real part. This video goes with an article on the CNC Cookbook blog that you'll want to be able to refer to in order to follow the video better, and I've shown the link right here below our title. Okay? So for starters, let's have a look at this part. Here you can see what it looks like. It's some kind of a, a bracket. Um, somebody popped up on one of the online boards and wanted to know what people would quote to make this part. He only needs one of them. Um, the replacement part is no longer available and he's either worn out or broken uh, this part. So he's, he's got to duplicate the part and he's got no uh, no CAD drawing of it. He's just got a part and he wants another one. And that's, you know, not that atypical of walk-in business for a job shop. So let's see how we go about quoting it. What we see here is not too bad. We can face mill the top and bottom of a piece of uh, 6061 aluminum. Uh, we can cut a 2D profile and get this outside shape taken care of. There's a few pockets, internal pockets here and there that we'll cut. And there is a, a big center pocket, and then there's some holes. Um, looking at the whole thing, uh, there's a couple of challenges I want to talk about and make sure we get right, but it's it's not too bad. I think we can make this part in a in a milling vise without too much trouble. The challenges are going to be the bearing pocket. Bearing pockets uh, typically have pretty tight tolerances, so we're going to want to take some extra care when we make that pocket. And the other challenge are all of these holes. I've got arrows everywhere there are holes to be drilled. And what we can see is we're going to be able to get most of them taken care of if we just stand this up and flip it around uh, in the milling vise once we're ready to drill the holes. But there's two sets of holes that are at odd angles. And we're going to need a, a special bit of fixturing uh, to take care of those holes. I've got a trick for you. And again, if you'll go check out the blog post, you can see uh, how I plan to do that. So that's that's basically what I've got in mind. Uh, let's bring up GWizard Estimator now and see what it's going to take to quote the part. Okay, here's what Estimator looks like when it comes up. And uh, this is the summary page. There's a detail page here with both variable costs and fixed costs. So your variable costs are per part costs, and your fixed costs are one-time costs. And if we were going to make a whole bunch of these brackets and we wanted to you know, build a custom fixture for it, the, the effort required to build the custom fixture is a one-time cost that you do uh, rather than a cost that you put on every part. So it's pretty straightforward to... Uh, go through the different features in the part, and I've got a whole list of them in the blog post. And the easiest thing is just for you to turn to that blog post and uh, have a look. The, the list of features in the post, here's the post, and I, I go through a little bit of homework that I did uh, initially in CAM and then CAD to get a look at what are the features, what are their measurements, that sort of thing. Um, create a quick and dirty example of it. It's not exactly right, but it's close enough for our estimate. Um, and then here's the list of features we want to do here in terms of surface the top and bottom of the face mill, do the outside perimeter, do the internal pockets, do the bearing bore, do a lip at the bottom of the hole, and then drilling our various holes. So as I say, refer to that uh, article for your best results. All right, so we're ready to start adding uh, uh, features to our estimate, and that's really the first thing you want to do. When I say features, I'm basically talking about uh, uh, the same thing you expect to see when you machine. So I click the uh, Add Off button, and we get the Add Off pop-up, and there's a lot of different operations you can put into a quote. For example, it comes up on the raw material, and we'll... We'll get back to that in a minute, but first I want to go through and do machining ops that correspond to the individual features. And you'll see the types of features we allow across the top here, pockets, 2D profiles, 
poles, 3D surfaces, face milling, custom features, and so on. So we're going to start out, we're going to surface the top and the bottom with a face mill. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, I, I like to use uh, 120 thousandths here as my number for my depth of cut. This, this part is uh, 4 inches by 4 inches, but we're actually looking at a 5 by 5 chunk of material um, as the nearest size piece of material we can get that uh, still allows us to have some, some excess material to machine all the sides. So we're going to go 5 by 5, and we're going to hit, hit recalc here. And the beauty of this is uh, G-Wizard will just go through and completely... Uh, analyze the situation and tell us everything we need to know. We're using a three inch six flute indexable face mill. We're going to do this in, in a couple of passes. Um, you know, here's our here's our depths, cut depth, cut width, RPM, uh, feed rate. You got all your feeds and speeds. The whole nine yards is there. So I'm happy with that. And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, plug that in by hitting save off. Now, what happens when I save off is my operation got added in here on my per part, uh, basically, list of operations that make up the quote. All right, so let's go go in and get, get the next piece. That would be the outside perimeter. I'm going to do a 2D profile. Again, the aluminum is a quarter-inch thick aluminum. Uh, I want to go ahead and cut a chamfer on all the edges. We'll make that... Uh, chamfer a tenth of an inch. Uh, and I have some information I pulled out of, like I say, the CAD drawing. So uh, the volume of material to be removed is 0.55 cubic inches. And the perimeter of the outside area is 12.434 inches. All right. So I recalculate that. And you know, once again, I get uh, very quickly back Here's three passes. I'm going to make a roughing pass, feeds and speeds. I'm going to make a finish pass, and then I'm going to do a chamfer pass. And that's all factored in here automatically for us. G Wizard calculates everything you need to know. And I do a save off. Again, let's have a look. Great. And I've got all these different operations factored in for the 2D profile. All right, so let's keep going. We've got some uh, pockets. I'm only showing two rather than three pockets. There, there really are, are three pockets on the thing, but uh, and it's you know it's got some symmetry. So this looks slightly different than the part in the picture, but you know close enough. And I don't want to take the extra time on the on the video to do it. So again, quarter inch thick. Corner radiuses look like they're certainly no worse than a quarter inch. Uh, we want to chamfer the inside. Uh, edges here on our pocket so it looks nice and so let's see our first pocket is going to be what is it its volume is uh, 0.068 cubic inches and the perimeter around the outside of the pocket is 2.226 as I say there's a mirror image here so we've got a quantity of two of these guys so let's save that out Again, it's doing just what it's been doing. Oh, see, now we didn't recalculate, so it's reminding us. We just hit the recalculate. Let's uh, save it again. Okay. And now we have our pocket rough finish chamfer. And we did a couple of them. Let's do another one. This one is uh, the other one, it's a little bit smaller. 0.042 cubic inches of material to remove, and it is 1.951. Um, I'm going to take a quantity of two. I'm going to recalculate. I'm going to save that off. Okay, there's our second pocket. Uh, let's talk about the bearing bore. For that, we're going to interpolate a hole. So I can come over here to the hole wizard. Got a bunch of different things we can do to holes, and interpolation is one of them. That guy looked to me like he was about 0.6. What are we going to do about the need for it to uh, 
be precision. I think the way I'm going to handle that is I'm just going to double, even though there's only one bore, I'm going to double the cost on this by hitting a quantity of two. I'm going to recalculate. Again, you get your complete recipe of all your feeds and speeds. I'm going to save that operation. And there's my bearing pocket. And in fact, there's really two bores here. There's a lip at the bottom of that hole that holds the bearing from moving any further. And that's a half inch diameter. And so we'll just do the same, uh, same thing here. Let's recalculate this guy, plug it in, save the op. And now we've got really an awful lot of machining taken care of. We're interpolating our hole. Um, but now we've got to drill all those, all those little holes in the sides. And again, I'm gonna, I'm in my hole wizard. That's perfect. I don't know what size those are, so I'm just going to estimate an eighth of an inch. You know, the depth is quarter inch on all this stuff. Uh, we're not going to bother to spot drill or chamfer any of those. We're just going to go for it. Uh, they don't look like they're finished any more than that anyway. So we got a we got a, a twist drill operation uh, uh, keyed up here. And uh, what we got? We've got. Uh, two sets of holes. We've got four holes, right? So quantity four, recalculate, save that off. And then we've got a quantity of six, recalculate, and save that off. So now I've got all of my different features added in. These are twist drilling of these holes, right? One four, one six. And we've got quite a bit of information here. We're starting to see some summary information on a, a cost per piece and the cycle time to do all this on a, uh, we've, we've got this set up for a Haas VF1 in uh, aluminum. And so, so we've got our machining ops in. Now what else do we want to what else do we want to estimate in our quote? Because that's not everything. I think we need to estimate our uh, setup costs. So let's go to setup. Okay, here's the setup operation. I'm going to use my shop rate, which you can define in the settings. Uh, 85 bucks an hour on all of these, and I'm going to start by installing a fixture on the machine. Again, you can predefine all this information. I've got. And we'll put our vice on the machine. We'll say that takes a half an hour. We'll save that off. We're going to load the parts. It's only one in this case, but we're going to uh, save the off. Now we've got to flip and move the part around to orient it. And I count four flips. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four flips. We're going to unload the parts. Click the done. And that's all the uh, that's all the setup costs, and they go in just right down here. Okay, and you can see our our uh, costs are rising as we do this. Right, we're up to 124 bucks for this part, but we're still not done. We don't have any programming time for our cam programming. So let's go over here, and we can generate our programming time based on the number of features. This part has 16 features. Um, you can change all these parameters, but I'm, I'm estimating this at three minutes to do a feature. And again, I'm using our hourly chop rate here. So that's about, uh, what, 48 minutes to get this programming done for this part. And then last but not least, let's get some material cost in there. So we're gonna use a rectangular piece of aluminum. Uh, I need to have a quarter inch part when I'm done, so we'll go to the next larger size, three eighths. And as I say, we want to go five inches by five inches, right? And in the past, I'm only making one of these parts, but in the past, I've paid six dollars a pound for this, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this up 15 percent, um, right? So the material for the part is cheap; it's it's six bucks. Uh, but we still need to add it into our quote. All right, so that's all of our operations. How did we do on this? We've got a really detailed quote. In fact, we can we can take this and uh, uh, 
we can save the quote as a uh, spreadsheet and, and use it as a worksheet for our CAM programming. If we choose to actually do the part, we'll have all of our what tools we need. We'll have our feeds and speeds. That will already all be figured out for us. Uh, but we're going to wind up at $220 a piece uh, for this thing in about 2.2 hours spent doing all of this. So I don't know if it was me bidding the job, I'd, I'd probably just round it up and call it 250 bucks. And, you know, anybody that's ever run a machine shop knows, you know, the look on the customer's face when you tell them <laughs> you want 250 bucks to do just the one part is, you know, that's kind of tough for them to accept that. Um, but what they don't understand is you're only making one part and they had to pay for all the setup, they had to pay for the cam design, all of these things that you would normally have uh, just spread the cost over, say, if you were making 50 of these parts, that would make the individual part cost a lot less. Um, and in fact, we were, we were down there under 20 bucks. Uh, before we started to add in the big ticket items like the setup time and the camera program. So that's how you go about uh, quoting a part using GWizard Estimator. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to write in my email at bob at cnccookbook.com. Happy to help you out. If you'd like to try the GWizard Estimator, it's in beta test currently. And so anyone that uses our GWizard calculator, feeds and speeds calculator, can use it for free. Uh, to their heart's content and give us your feedback and help us define what the product's going to be. Thanks very much. I will see you soon with another video.